Welcome back to the shop. We're going to take this piece of zebra and we're going to turn it into a top. Now, I talked about chalk in one of the videos and I like to use chalk because right here and then down here, I am actually going to mark on this because I'm going to cut the board and I'm going to flip it around so that these grains match up. So, I use the chalk because it is hard to see pencil on there. Now, I already have a straight edge on one side. So, I'm going to straighten up the edge on the other side very quickly. Turn on my back. didn't hear it the miter saw started to make a high pitch noise my blade is actually very dirty and worn out um, the Walt blades don't hold up uh, they came out with a very new version but every time I bought a new version they just wear out it seems even faster um, their newest blade um, for this amount of teeth I think it's 96 teeth it's 60 bucks. I can get a very good blade from Diablo, made by Freud, um, which I'm actually about to put in there. But if you notice, it actually put some burn marks in there. Now, Zebra's a very hard wood, but this, with the amount of teeth and the RPMs, it should be able to handle that quite well. You notice, I took a couple extra minutes when I was measuring. The reason why I did that was because if I would have actually just split the board in half, I wouldn't have had much usable material. And I can actually take this, rip it in half. I can actually do something with this. I can I can use it for two small short sides of a box, which is why I always I don't throw it away. Put it right down there in my little bucket. Now, if you also notice I used the tape once and then I lined the other piece up to it to get them as flush as possible. I overcut this by one eighth of an inch to the length of the top because that way um, if we have slippage when we go to glue it up it will um, still be able to come out as an 18 inch piece plus if it's oversized we can go with the flush uh, trim router 
and really clean that up so it's completely flush, minimal sanding, and uh, it'll look like a solid piece. So now we're gonna go over, we're gonna glue it up, and on this we have plenty of glue surface. There's no reason to reinforce with biscuits. There's no need to do some sort of tongue and groove. There's no need to do finger grooves or anything like that. It's just, we have plenty of glue surface. The proper glue will always hold up the best. If you didn't hear it, the miter saw started to make a high pitch noise my blade is actually very dirty and worn out. Um, DeWalt blades don't hold up. Uh, they came out with a very new version, but every time I bought a new version, they just wear out. It seems even faster. Um, their newest blade um, for this amount of teeth, I think it's 96 teeth, it's 60 bucks. I can get a very good blade from Diablo, made by Freud. Um, which I'm actually about to put in there, but if you notice it actually put some burn marks in there now zebra is a very hard wood But this with the amount of teeth and the rpms it should be able to handle that quite well You notice I took a couple extra minutes when I was measuring The reason why I did that was because if I would have actually just split the board in half I wouldn't have had much usable material and I can actually take this rip it in half I can actually do something with this. I can, I can use it for two small short sides of a box, which is why I always, I don't throw it away. Put it right down there in my little bucket. Now, if you also notice, I used the tape once and then I lined the other piece up to it to get them as flush as possible. I overcut this by one eighth of an inch to the length of the top because that way um, if we have slippage when we go to glue it up, it will um, still be able to come out as an 18 inch piece. Plus, if it's oversized, we can go with the flush uh, trim router and really clean that up so it's completely flush, minimal sanding, and uh, it'll look like a solid piece. So now we're gonna go over, we're gonna glue it up, and on this we have plenty of glue surface. There's no reason to reinforce with biscuits. There's no need to do some sort of tongue and groove. There's no need to do finger grooves or anything like that. It's just, we have plenty of glue surface. The proper glue will always hold up the best. All right, so we already have our clamps set up. I'm using 24 inch jet clamps. Um, these will provide us with an equal amount of clamping pressure. The um, arrows, you can tell, they are aligned. So you've got boom. Got boom, the bit nice for the face screen. I'll just go ahead and show you that. You notice that face screen just really lines up there. Um, I'll appreciate the appreciate clamps so you get what you pay for. I've learned that through trial and error. Um, and these are going to provide equal pressure. They're simple to use. Now, when I do this, I'm going to flip both of these pieces up. When we get to multiple pieces, it's going to be a little bit harder, um, but it's no big. I'm going to get my tight bond glue out here. I'm going to put glue on both sides. I'm not worried about squeeze out. And this, I'm not worried about squeeze out one bit. Other people will be. Um, I talked about it before. There's a glue scraper that I use. And you can actually sand wood by scraping it. They actually sell scrapers that are dedicated to that. Now I'm just going to massage this in with my finger. Um, it's, it's actually, Zebra does not like glue necessarily. It is such a hard wood. Um, so if you notice, I put some good amount of glue on there. And, I mean, it just, it really, I know, you might be able to see, it, it's not giving me the coverage that I want. Which is why I'm not worried about squeeze out for the Zebra. The only thing that I am worried about is over clamping the Zebra. So I'm actually going to put more glue in here. Some people will use a glue brush, whether it's a, those craft brushes that cost, $5 for 50 or 100 for cheap little brushes. I, I bought some and just found it. It's a waste of my money. And you got glue on my fingers, what you do? That's what my glue rag is for. All those sometimes. I'm like, oh, old phone. I don't get fingerprint recognition very well. So now we've got both glued up. Sorry. I mean, there, there's some good glue in there. And so we're actually to see how I have the clamp set up. Over here, we have it to where we have the appropriate amount of glue. Um, or sorry, clamping space. These jet clamps are so nice. I mean, they, they have a smooth operation. And no, I don't work with jet. Um, these are actually the only jet tools that I own. I really want a new table saw. Um, I know jet makes quality, but there's so many out there. Um, same thing with the drum sander. I truly need one for the top. But I cannot figure out what I want. Um, so if you notice, I'm going to touch down a little bit. It actually already slipped. I cannot run my finger all the way across. It's natural. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our first clamp. And it should just auto square up some pole right on in there. 
Yeah, and I noticed the glue's starting to squeeze out. I'm not cranking these things down. I'm getting nice and snug. That way I can realign these pieces a little too snug. And these are coarse handle, but you will find that a fine clamp handle, it takes forever to thread. And then once you start putting pressure on it, I know I said I wasn't worried about squeeze out, but I'm at least going to take out what I can. Now the one thing to notice is, I mean, there is no, I mean, there's no flex in these people. I flex there because I don't have much pressure on them. But they're not cupping. Um, we're just putting a little bit more pressure on there. And see, we've got more glue squeezing out. So there's more squeezing out on the floor. But they are completely holding in without any problem. I'll tell you, these are the only clamps that I own that truly do that. I, these stay flush with the bottom. I had one that came up over here, but um, sometimes it's just to be expected. I'm going to apply a little bit more pressure. Um, notice I'm not cranking down. You don't see, you know, like, um, that's not good. That puts too much pressure. So I start going to pieces. Um, and you really don't want that. If you want to know why I use chalk, it's literally disappearing already. Um, and you can see it a little bit better. Um, so we're actually going to let this sit. We've got some squeeze out on the bottom, too. I'm actually going to tighten it up just a little bit. Which I do not crank down on this. These will apply equal pressure. They're all equally adjusted. Um, super easy to operate. Super easy to glue up. So as we can see, we have a nice stable piece here. We've got some glue squeezing out there. It's not, it's not shifting really. It's nice and smooth all throughout, giving us good clamping pressure. Here's what I was talking about with the course. Um, and these handles are very nice. They're comfort grip. Now, as we move through here, I will show you that these are good clamps. The Irwin are a fine thread. I'm actually gonna pull one down for you to see what I'm talking about. Oh. That's fine thread. It just takes too long. We'll compare them together here. Okay, there we go. You can tell so this you're going to turn it forever until you really feel that you can tell that head i'm turning and turning and turning and turning and turning and now we're finally starting to get where i crank down whereas as with this guy it's already tight i mean i can't can't crank down on anymore and i still can on this one and that's going to be your main difference these are the Boras that I was talking about earlier. I'm not really fond of them, but then again, maybe there's another level that they have that I can test out. Now, you can never have too many clamps. And I use them all. I actually do. People make fun of me for my clamps and the amount that I use. So now, back to the project. We have plenty of glue in there. As you can tell, I've got plenty of glue in there, um, which literally just flakes off after it's dried up for a little bit. Um, the nice thing about this tight bond is that it is actually stainable. So if we weren't using exotics, it, it, it is stainable. Um, which is one reason why I use it. Uh, all right, welcome back to the shop. Now, yesterday, I went ahead and glued up the top, which I did record that process. So now that you see me in different clothes, no, I did not change in between. Um, one thing that I did not cover specifically is that DeWalt parallel clamps are actually the same as Irwin parallel clamps. Um, just a different name, same design. Um, however, I will tell you that when I spoke about the Irwin clamps and how they have the fine thread, I still have an actual use for those all the time. Another cool thing with this, we have a solid lamination here, but these these are actually designed parallel clamps. You can actually flip it up, move it out of the way, and then you can start on another glue up. Uh, if you get too many glue ups, this is a small glue up. You can move it to the floor if you don't have a bench my size. I have another eight foot bench 
by four foot bench that we have not even seen yet because it's halfway set up as a spray booth and we'll get to that. So, this lamination, we're gonna pull it out of clamps and I did not put too much force on it, just the right amount of force. Pull that out of there. These clamps are awesome. Boom. 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 Now, I don't need these anymore. So, I can actually just take them over, set them in my rack, and they're out of the way. Uh, they design parallel clamp racks. They keep getting more innovative with their designs. It's important to keep your bench as clean as possible. Because, it's nothing worse when you're doing a project. You don't have the bench space when you need it. And I keep my clamps close so that they're where I need them to be. Now this lamination came out very smooth. But on this back side, I wasn't worried about all this glue squeeze out because I had spoke about how Zebra is a pain in the ass to plane. It just is. So um, I'm gonna plane this side. It's actually gonna go um, you're going to be facing inside the box and since we're going to go ahead and laminate um, another piece of spanish cedar specifically because this is a humidor um, on top of this uh, it's going to reinforce that joint even more um, so it will become very stable um, we're going to go over to the planer it's going to get a little loud here <laughs> I'm actually going to put on the cart, my handy dandy cart, with my ouch pouch. It's your friend. I'm going to take this down. I'll worry about getting these clamps out of the way later. Now, if you can remember, I told you about this wax paper. Um, I, uh, I haven't even opened this. I haven't looked at it since we glued it up. A lot of people will check on their projects all the time, but I wanted you to see what it's gonna turn out. I didn't want to chisel or do anything like that. Um, that way you can see the process. As you can tell, that clamp stuck a little bit. So I'm interested to see if I've got glue on my table. Um, we'll see. A lot of people would say, never glue up on the table. But, I cleared off my other bench so that we could do this. Let's get these strap clamps off of here. And then we're going to have a look at what this really turned out like. I'm actually really curious to see. I'm going to like I have a feeling I'm going to like it. Because I'm watching it as I'm unclamping it, and I'll let you guys see it first. Now, we have a clamp saw, put some in the bucket, we'll wheel it with us. Um, all right, so we have the floor all glued in. 
we have a really good looking piece in here. Um, as you can tell, there's actually minimum squeeze out in those corners, um, wrapped around beautifully. Um, those miters are really good. Um, and I will tell you, miter joints are just hard to do sometimes. It's one of the hardest clamp ups you'll ever do. It turned out nice and clean. There's minimal clean up inside. Um, and then, we have the wax paper. Some of it's stuck together. You can actually reuse that. Doesn't matter if you crumble it up. But as you can see, we actually have no glue on that table. There's no glue on it. Um, and that's what that wax paper is for. It's your friend. It, it, it really will just save you a headache. Um, you know, if you have a much smaller shop than mine, your, your space is so limited, um, and you'll find that no matter how much you grow, space will always be an issue unless you can just build you a dedicated shop. Um, some people actually put their shops in their basement and have a door, um, where it opens up to the back side they can get their materials in um i wish my house had a basement but beggars can't be choosers um, i have this off ball from the lid i know it looks small you're probably wondering what the hell is that guy gonna use it for um i'll use this for like a nice inlay on the top of uh, maybe a custom walnut humidor uh, just to give it some contrast you see what i do i love to mix um, exotics with this is nothing to throw away. Honestly, this is worth probably 16 bucks right here. Zebra's not cheap. We have our top. And most importantly, we have our glue. Now, I oversized this lid. A lot of people um, underestimate slippage. You start putting pressure on a corner like this it's going to want to push it this way um, or this way or become, you know, twisted. Which, oh, I mean, I'll, I'll show you exactly what I mean. Um, you're going to put that clamp there and it might push that over and you'll have an exposed edge somewhere. And then it's hard to get it back under control because of the glue spread, um, which you'll see how I clean that up. I'll use a flush bit on a handheld router, we'll do it all right here, kick up serious dust, uh, but we'll get to that in the next video. And uh, you're probably wondering, what the hell, how's he gonna make this thing into a, an actual box that opens? Well, the reason why you build the box, glue on the top, is because we're actually gonna take this sucker, run it through the table saw, where I want that lid to come through, and you're gonna have two identical matching pieces. And that is what is important. If you build the lid and the box separate, no matter what you do, they're gonna be off. Whether it was the pressure with the clans, blah, blah, blah. And then you're gonna have literally the worst time of your life trying to sand that, especially with some hardwoods. You can see over here, I'm working on some humidors for breast cancer. Uh, they're gonna be dyed pink. I'm playing with the dyes over here. Um, what the fuck that was? Uh, nah, nothing important. But I'm working on trying to get the pink just right. Uh, I'll show you those when they're done. One's gonna go to my good brother. Um, he's done some solid things in the tobacco industry. Um, he's really making a name for himself and I'm proud of himself for putting him out there. So it's gonna be, a, one's gonna be a gift for him. I know that he knows who he is. He does not need the recognition uh, because we always stay humble, uh, but it's gonna be a gift to him because I have, I love to watch people grow. And if you send me pictures of what you do or you ask me for question, questions, you know, no question is a stupid question. We've all been there. We didn't learn you by coming out with something like this perfect. 
It just doesn't work that way. You learn from mistakes. You fail. And actually, I will show you one of my failures. And technically, it turned out to be beautiful. I put my router bits in it. I could have sold that thing. It was supposed to be a humidor. It was going to be baller, too. Um, but it just wasn't the quality. And once again, it was because I got distracted. The sun was kicking the soccer ball, shot into the shop. Uh, luckily, I wasn't in the middle of actually sawing it, but I got turned around. Now, if you notice, I'm just using my finger to spread this over the edge. We want good glue coverage. We want that glue to soak in a little bit um, so that we have our maximum hold. As you can see, as I'm, I'm massaging that, um, some of it is disappearing here um and or not spreading completely just got a little bit of glue on my fingers and i'll actually show you um so that you can really see that i put a good amount of glue and as i'm rubbing it through we don't have it on those edges um exactly the way we want it um and if you notice i'm working on a towel as you get further into the process you're going to want to work with a towel there be as you don't want the project to fall and damage a core. And as you get deeper into it, it gets more stressful, even for someone that's done. It becomes more detrimental because you can't fix it. Which is why when I'm going to do these hinges, um, I am going to do them right. I actually have a cheap template that I use um, to make sure that it took the time to, to make it. It took me a little while because it's so small, but it's paid for it that time. Uh, and the scraps that I went through, um, I have already been rewarded by not screwing up the hinges. I use, they're 30 bucks a pop uh, for the hinges that I use, uh, but they are solid. And once we get to that, you're going to see why I use them. Um, they're just built right um, and not wrong. There's nothing worse than having a crack hinge on a salt on a beautiful project. So now that glue is nice and set in, and this pop is oversized a little bit. Now, I wanted this side to be my, bat, uh, my bad side, but I was really surprised that this zebra fed so right well on um, the I really really was. And I actually like the other side better. I didn't have a bunch of tear out. I was worried with the reverse grains that it would. And I'm just checking the edges over here so I overhung a little bit. Uh, but I want them to be consistently overhung. That way, the top is actually where it needs to be when we go to trim it. Now, we already got a test over here. It's very important. I'm going to show you that it's important to apply equal pressure. I'm going to stand a couple of up on opposite corners. The reason why I'm going to do this on opposite corners is so that I don't disturb that lid as much as possible. And it's actually safer balance it out and work. And we're opposite each other for opposite pressure. Alright, so we're going to lower these down. We're really not going to tighten it up much. And I don't want it to slam down on the surface. Um, these clamps, once again, I'm going to tell you are just awesome. Worked every penny I ever spent. Took me a long time to really pull the trigger on them. I find um, um, intimidating to spend money on clamps and wonder if you'll really use them all. Spoke about how you make fun of the clamps sometimes. Believe it or not, the other day I ran out of clamps. Um, everything was off the wall. Including scratch clamps, quick grip clamps, and it was all gone. Um, and that we're just applying a little bit of pressure, okay? I mean, I'm not snugging that down yet. Uh, I really want to make sure that we get some nice, even pressure. The glue's got plenty of workable time. That's why I like this glue. Um, we're going to recheck, make sure our overhang is equal as possible, which it is. Um, so I'm going to tighten a little bit, tighten a little bit, tighten a little bit. Not put too much pressure, because we're going to let that glue soak in. And it's important that you don't put too much force and squeeze out all your glue. Um, it's just not the way you want to do it. And I'm not over tightening these. Um, I'm just slowly doing the process. And as you see, we're going to go through. I'm actually going to move this clamp so I have maximum capacity here, especially on that corner. And I'm not going to run out of clamps. Um, so that's important. I don't have a glue up today that requires me to move any of these clamps. I'm actually going to move this out of the way when we're done so I can work on these breast cancer humidors. I'm not going to make anything off of them. I'm not looking even to recoup material costs. I'm going to auction it off and want to. My cigar groups and the person who brings can donate that money to charity. I don't need any credit for that. As you can see, even though we're not tightened up on that, I can rotate this piece just fine. And it's heavy. I rotated it. I'm going to check my overhangs. Um, <coughs> I'm going to check my overhangs. Now, you'll see as I apply pressure, this is why I wear the gloves. That, and I get more grip when I'm feeding on the table saw. I get more grip so I don't have to put my fingers so close to the router blade. Um, I'm going to make sure that I'm not going to be able to do that. And believe it or not, I still get count through the gloves. Um, they're not to protect my hands. It counts through the gloves. Um, they're not to protect my hands. I'm not worried about them. 
I'm not a I'm not a hand model. So we're gonna tighten these up equivalently as we move around. Just tighten them up. Gonna let them sit like that. As you can tell, each time I'm squeezing down. Um, it's getting easier to turn. That was a little hard. That's a little hard. That's a little hard. Um, we'll let these sit for a minute. Literally, we're going to let them sit for just a minute. I'm getting minimal squeeze out, which is really what we're looking for. Um, but when I show you the process of how I'm going to trim this all up to make it to where we don't have to sand a whole bunch, um, it's going to be super easy. I'm also going to show you a cheat sheet because when you're using a handheld router on a piece, it's very intimidating. Um, I don't, I don't care how long you've been doing it. Um, you can get turned around. I'll show you a cheat sheet. You can get these cheat sheets a lot of times in magazines cause they don't, they can't emphasize it enough um on the directions that you because it's actually opposite of your table saw which you use the most um now these sat for a minute got some pressure equal pressure now these put 1000 pounds of pressure and you don't have to crank them down um and that's what i like about it um i really do uh, i'm passionate about woodworking that's why i continue to talk um, now this is solid. I can just move it up out the way, but it's heavy with these clamps. Um, since I moved it, I'm going to tighten up a little bit again. It's going to be nice. Take a nice drink of my coffee because it is a little cold out here, but I'm comfortable. I really am. Now let's talk about wax paper. I've got wax paper over here. I've got folded up over there. You can reuse it, it's cheap. Um, and it can save some of your surfaces. The um, next part of this video that we're gonna come out with next is going to cover, once again, the lid. We're gonna saw off the lid and then we're gonna do the lamination inside of the lid. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. And when we do that, it's gonna be very important for that wax paper because we're going to use a board to reinforce that so we get good pressure on there and there's nothing worse than having glue get a little porous through that uh spanish cedar and have your 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 uh, cheater board get stuck on it um because it will rip out that spanish cedar spanish cedar is con is considered a hardwood um, by nature however um, when you start getting to one quarter inch on any material, um, it, it does become a little bit weaker. Um, so it's very important that we uh, put even pressure on that. Um, once again, with safety, if you didn't notice, I'm not wearing safety glasses, I'm not wearing a respirator. I didn't kick up too much dust. The dust collector did that for me. When you saw me running the planer, there was minimal dust coming out of there. Never run a planer, ever without either a dust collection bag of some sort and or the the bag that came with the tool over a trash can or whatever even just if it's a hose that feeds it straight to the floor you, it will kick dust everywhere um it'll get in your eyes um it it will get all over in your respiratory system and it will be a disaster uh, for you even if you wear safety glasses it's going to cut coat those things in a heartbeat if you wonder why i wear the hat it's because i don't want sawdust in my hair it's not because i'm balding um and someone actually commented on the hat in a private message um they were one of my friends giving me a hard time we're gonna let this sit up for today and i appreciate all of you watching i really do i do not work for jet by the way um, I don't have, I buy all these tools myself. Um, I'm just explaining that there is a difference between all of them. So when I'm saying that a clamp might not be what you should invest in, um, it's because it's based off experience. And if you're going to get into this, 
or you're already into this and you're like, you know, I can't make that investment. Buy two clamps at a time, find them on sale. Um, I only buy them when they're on sale or if I'm doing a custom project and someone needs me to order a custom clamp. Um, believe it or not, I had to order a nine foot jet clamp. That was not cheap for the pair, uh, but they, they paid for it. I was open and honest with them. I probably won't need to use this again for a custom cabinet for your 12 foot tall ceiling. Um, and yeah, I built the cost in. They were cool with it. So if you're doing this to sell stuff, really take that into consideration. People will understand. And if they don't understand, they probably are not willing to pay what your time was worth and or what the materials really are worth. Another thing is that respect that wood, maximize the wood. Scraps can always be used. I have a usable scrap bucket at every saw and I have um, a not usable scrap bucket. And I appreciate you all for watching. Have a wonderful day.